Hi, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. How about you? Good. So you're a new dad. Have you gotten any sleep lately? Oh, yeah, plenty. Um, luckily, uh, my wife's been a big help, obviously. Um, but our son um, has been very healthy, which obviously helps. Um, he has a, you know, a couple of minor things going on with him, but we hired a lady who uh, helps us with a, a sleep schedule, and he's four months. He's almost four months, and probably for about a month, he sleeps from 7:30 at night to seven in the morning. So yeah, it's been wow. we've been blessed in that in in that regard um, because if it wasn't for uh, the lady that we uh, that helped us with it, we'd be kind of freestyling it, you know. So. Uh, I feel like that's how everybody is, you know. You just you have a baby, you don't know what to really do. You so you just you feed it, you you know you put it to, to put it to bed when you think it's tired. But uh, the schedule that we've been doing has been fantastic, and she bases it all off, all on his uh, his weight, his size, his eating habits, and stuff. So uh, he sleeps pretty good for almost twelve hours. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I have never heard of that before. Yeah. That's really. Um, are you excited to see if the the new dad power is a true thing? Well, you know, it, it worked out the first time. Uh, you know, I fought uh, Ramos on, you know, eight days uh, post having my kids. So, um, you know, it, one thing that it helped me out with that fight was that uh, it just made, you know, it made everything that seemed like a really big deal to me not so so much of a big deal. So it's probably as comfortable as I've ever been walking out to a fight was that fight. Um, just because I had not even, a, like about a week ago, I'd watched my wife, you know, give birth to her son, which is, you know, incredible on her own, you know, that was probably the craziest thing I've ever seen her do. And uh, so, you know, putting things in perspective from there was just a, a bit easier for me. What do you think of your opponent? Um, you know, he's a, he's, he's a tough, you know, a tough Mexican cat, you know, and he's going to want to bring it, uh, uh, which I'm happy, you know, I'm happy to oblige. Uh, I think um, he's a bit, uh, you know, it seems like he loses the first round, like most often than not, and kind of just wants to be in it for the long haul, and he usually comes on a bit stronger towards the end. But those are also my, you know, qualities as well in a fight. Uh, the longer the fight, I always feel like I have more of an advantage. Um, and so, you know, he had to move up to featherweight because, I, you know, he, he wasn't making weight very good at, uh, at phantom weight. Um, I think he's a bit undersized for the uh, for the weight class, but uh, I think he's uh, I think he's decent everywhere. He doesn't like you know he's kind of like me, not really specifically great at anything or <laughs> like not specifically like an expert at, at any part of it, but just decent all around. So I gotta be careful on the feet. Gotta be careful on the grappling and the wrestling as well. Um, and uh, you know I gotta pace myself. He's not gonna be a guy that's gonna get out of there early. Uh, he's kind of a, you know, he's a guy that's going to be there the entire 15 minutes. So I got to prepare for that. And, uh, but I feel like that's my, one of my skill sets, uh, in fighting as well. So, uh, I think I can see this fight going, you know, the distance, but having, a, an exciting, you know, 15 minutes. When he was in here, we, you know, I told him a couple of the things that you had said in previous yeah. um, interviews. And he said that it sounds like you're scared, that those are words of someone that's scared. How would you respond to that? Oh, well, I mean. Everybody has their opinion. Uh, I'm definitely not afraid uh, to fight. This is what we do for a living. I've, this is my 15th UFC fight, um, and uh, my 51st fight altogether. I have you know 40 professional fights, uh, 10 amateur fights. Uh, shoot, even my first amateur fight, I fought twice that night. Um, but it's you know this is what I do for a living. You know this is what I do for fun. Like uh, it, you know I think everybody has mixed in uh, their hobby as their career when they are a fighter because that's what got us in it to begin with. My old coaches to say. Uh, Remember the time when you used to pay a membership to go train and get beat up, and now you get paid to do it. So you gotta keep those same that same mentality about it that it's still a hobby and something that you enjoy doing. And I truly enjoy fighting. Like, um, if he, really, I mean, I don't know if he's watched any of my fights, <laughs> but it's, it's definitely not. You don't get, you don't, co I don't come across as somebody that's scared in there. You know, um, you know, we all have our, uh, you know, our nervousness and our excitement and the, and and that kind of uh, nervous energy that comes along with fighting, but. Um, once you get in there and you get, you know, after the first couple of minutes, I think everybody kind of warms up and feels good. And, uh, I'd be, you know, if someone is, I mean, I feel like we've weeded out all the scared guys. You, those guys don't make it to the UFC. And if they do, they only last for a little bit. I've been in and out of the UFC so many times. Um, uh, and I feel like I'm starting to really get my stride and, uh, and figuring it out. You hear your fans say that all the time about fighters. Oh, he's scared. That's why yeah. he didn't take the fight. Or he's running or he's doing this. And you kind of already touched on the fact that, you know, Fighters don't really get scared because yeah. they wouldn't make it this far, right? Yeah, exactly. I um, and I don't, you know, I don't necessarily think that we're not scared to fight. We're scared of circumstances, right? Like, I'm afraid of my paycheck not coming in, and like, you know, if 
you know, if, if somebody, um, you know, if the incentive's there, it has nothing to do with being scared to fight. But, like, if I'm scared to lose my job, like, I want to be in the UFC as long as I possibly can. And if it means that, you know, I have two different opponents and one's an easier opponent for me stylistically, I'm going to choose that guy over the other guy every single time. Not because I'm scared of the other guy, but I want to keep my job, and this is the best route to keep my job. And so, like, when people think, say that people are scared, it's not necessarily that. If we were, if we were just fighting for free – or if we were going to get paid the same, or if we were going to get paid differently on different types of opponents, then I think there would be, uh, you know, a lot less of that. You know, people like pulling out of fights or dodging things, and um, I think people get afraid of uh, a lot of different things in fighting. A lot of variables. You know, weight cutting is one of the hardest things to do. I think in the fight game, and that's one thing that he's kind of slipped up on a quite a bit. I've never missed weight. I'm six foot one as a featherweight. You know, I'm one of the bigger featherweights in the UFC, um, and so I feel like. That can kind of like really show uh, show inconsistency. That, that inconsistency can show a little bit of um, uh, not necessarily being scared, but willing to push yourself to the limit. You know, there's been times I've had really bad weight cuts, but I still got the weight off, and I still went up and showed up the next day. You know, and some guys, you know, quit the quit the weight cut and they don't make the weight. And I feel like that's you know part of his career. Uh, there's an asterisk by it because he's four and one in the UFC, which is, and he's got some good wins over some good guys. The Dalgarian fight, I think Dalgarian got robbed a little bit. If anybody watches that fight, I think you would agree with me. Um, the Raul fight, uh, he missed weight, and um, uh, and the Raul made some mistakes in that fight. And I'm a training partner of his as well. But uh, uh, you know, when you miss weight, it, it's a huge advantage. And um, I think uh, one of the things that they should do if someone misses weight is I think it should be an automatic point off the first round because. That's a bigger advantage in kicking someone in the balls on accident or poking them in the eye on accident. So um, I think him, him being four and one in the UFC has a little bit of an asterisk by it, but uh, you know, still impressive. I don't want to take anything away from that, but uh, you know, there's a reason why he has some of those wins. I know that we have seen some fighters move up and still miss weight. Is yeah. that something that you've thought about? Like, do I you, hope are so. you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know you want the extra money. I'm sure, but y yeah, um, financially, you know, you, you hope your opponent's missing weight, you know, because it gives you a lot more options in that sense where it's like you kind of hold the, you know, all the cards in your hand. Um, uh, and then also just shows like you know the preparedness. You know, he's a small. I, I mean, he, I, I feel like he's an average uh, bantamweight. Um, so he's a smaller featherweight in my opinion. Uh, especially compared to a guy like me. So I can't imagine him missing weight. Uh, if he does, I mean, that's just, you know, he must have been lazy somehow or another. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's also really nice when people miss weight because you get, a, you know, percentage of their purses. I got – and not only that, when I fought Steven Peterson, he missed weight. We got fight of the night, so I ended up getting $50,000 on top of that because uh, because of him missing weight. And Hakeem Dawadu missed weight. First time he had ever missed weight in his entire career was against me, and both those fights I won. And uh, I feel like the Hakeem fight was one of the best performances I had uh, in the UFC. And so uh, I've, I have a really good track record against people who miss weight against me. So I hope he misses weight, but it has nothing to do with anything besides the financial part. If I can get a little extra cash, I think that's what we're all here for. Yeah. And I know you don't want to look past him, but what are your goals for the rest of the year? Do you plan on trying to fight again before the end of the year? Do you want to maybe take some time off for the holidays? Uh, you know, I, I'm always training. You know, uh, you know, most of my training partners and my coaches will tell you that, you know, in and out of camps, I'm always helping other guys out. And it's just because I really do enjoy doing it. You know, I enjoy training. I enjoy the entire process. I actually enjoy cutting weight as well, uh, which is, yeah, I know it's, <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing. But I really do enjoy cutting weight. I enjoy the whole process of fighting, every little bit of it. And so – uh, I mean, we're only halfway through the year, so there's plenty of time. This will be my obviously my second fight this year, um, and I had wanted to fight even earlier in the year um, uh, prior to my first fight with Ricardo Ramos. But uh, so I'm hoping to maybe uh, or at least get another fight uh, in this year, if not two. Thank you. Of course. Julian, what's up, bro? How are you, brother? I think it's been two years since you've actually got to fight in front of a crowd. Yes. Uh, how is that gonna feel? You know, I. Uh, a long, long uh, uh, I would say, shoot, maybe like seven years ago, I fought uh, Teru Ishihara on a pay-per-view uh, at the MGM and got knocked out. And so I kind of had jitters about fighting in front of a crowd after I had done so many fights at the Apex because I started feeling more comfortable at the Apex. And so I got kind of nervous fighting Hakeem Dawudu at the T-Mobile Arena because T-Mobile Arena is one of those things that's like really – sets the stage for you know you you're you're there like this is it you know i'm in front of all these you know thousands of people uh do you know fighting in the ufc and so uh fighting hakeem i thought i was gonna have a little bit of extra nervousness because of that but once i got in there and i was walked out and i'd seen everybody there 
uh, it kind of lit a little bit of a fire in my ass, and it actually uh, made me f- calm down even more. And I felt, I just felt a little bit more relaxed than I thought I was going to feel, you know. And so uh, I'm excited to go out there and see the fans and just uh, really feed off their energy. I think the the current record for most subs at 145 is six. Okay. And I think you're at three. You could oh, possibly nice. be at four this weekend. So is that something you've ever thought about? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, and, and dark chokes are my favorite choke. Uh, and so – and I'm always, I'm kind of like uh, you know pushing to because I have two darts chokes in the UFC and my very first UFC fight coming off the Ultimate Fighter I had him in a couple of darts chokes didn't know how to finish it like I do now and so uh, I wish I would have had that one because that would have put to, it would have put another one on there but uh, Vicente Luque I think has four uh, Kiesa he was tied with Kiesa with three for a while and then he he got a fourth one I think over Kiesa I think that was the one that got him over it but uh, so that's one that's you know there's not very many records that I feel like I can necessarily push to get but uh, uh you know dar choking a uh, dar choke being my favorite choke uh, is always something i'm hunting for so if it's there and it presents itself um that's something i that's a record that i'm looking to uh to push uh push for and obviously if you're saying six is the the most submissions then that will add to that as well um what's it like talking about dan Ige? what is it like and what kind of uh energy does it bring when you see a guy like that step up on a couple hours notice like what does that do for you when you see something like that happen yeah you know it's it wasn't necessarily surprising i mean i was surprised because i didn't know until uh, i was watching and he you know and he's wa- and they the camera pans to him and it's eric and him walking up i'm like holy shit what the hell is going on um so it was surprising in that sense but it wasn't surprising that he took it because the guys that we train with the group that we have under eric uh and everybody at extreme uh we have a kind of a smaller group that we train we train with on wednesdays and um like all of us would have done that, you know, like that's how that's our that's all of our mindsets. Like we're all those types of dudes that are willing to do that. And I think that's why we get uh, get along so well. But Dan is one of those guys who just can turn it on and just do it, you know, like taking the fight on, you know, hours notice uh, and showing up and doing what he did, Diego, uh, a rising superstar um, in, in Diego and being able to, you know, I think if uh, Dan would have pushed it a little further in that third round, he might have got him out of there. And so, and if that fight was, you know, a longer fight, if it's a main event, you know, what if it's a fight night and it was a main event, you know, I think Dan maybe, could, you know, could win that fight uh, on that given night. And he looked fantastic and was able to do what he did on four, on four hours notice and, and not knowing like how his body was. And he was getting massage. He was in camp. So, you know, being in camp myself, I know that the week of weigh-ins is kind of the first week I get to really relax and just let my body kind of recover while I'm getting the weight off um, and so I know he didn't have it obviously um, and so that comes with its own um, own issues as well so so but uh, like I said it's not surprising that he would do that because I know how he is and he's just one of those guys that's willing to go to war at any time yeah. thanks man Julian you mentioned that you believe that C-Rod is a bit of a slow starter yeah how important is it for you to set the tone right away to make sure that he doesn't really start to get his groove going? Yeah, I mean, I've always been one of those guys as well that's, uh, that kind of likes to pressure forward a little bit, sometimes uh, recklessly. And uh, so I want to, you know, I think it's a good fight for me in the sense of he's patient in the first round, which will get me patient in the first round, and then help build that momentum. Um, my problem has always been that I've been too, have had too much willingness to get knocked out trying to knock you out and do it too early um, when people have that power. So I want to be patient early on and just keep the range um, and uh, and just slowly build off the momentum. And, uh, you know, I think, like I said, I think our skill sets align pretty evenly um, in the sense of, uh, you know, the longer the fight goes, I feel like we both start to, you know, push that momentum a little bit further uh, as the fight goes on. And But I just have the size on them. I have the – I have to feel like I have the strength on him, and I don't think he's, you know, most of the smaller guys you worry about maybe the speed, but I, you know, watching his fights, I don't think he has a speed, uh, a huge speed advantage. But um, uh, yeah, I think uh, just being patient or him being patient is going to help me be patient as well. This isn't your first time fighting in Denver. It is definitely an adversity element for most fighters coming into the equation with the high altitude. Yeah. With you having that past experience, was there anything special that you did for this camp or for this opportunity to get yourself acclimated? Um, I've always been known for having good cardio, and the reason is is uh, I do a lot of running. I do a lot of extra things um, outside of uh, the gym that some people think I'm like a bit little crazy for doing. You know, sometimes I'll run like 15 miles, you know, on on my day off. You know, uh, I know Cheeto does that a lot as well. But one thing I've learned is like a lot of this. Uh, 
uh, a lot of the running that I do doesn't not only, not only it helps me you know physically with my cardio, but it's a it's a mental thing. It really builds that mental strength because um, running sucks, you know. <laughs> and uh, you know, doing those types of miles when you're already beat up and sore for the week uh, helps build that mom- uh, that mental uh, that mental strength. And so um, I've always been doing that, and so I wasn't necessarily worried about the uh, the elevation here um, specifically. Uh, I fought Devonte Smith here, you know, a while back. It only lasted a minute, so I wasn't really able to test my cardio in the fight. But all the, all the training and all the uh, pad work and all the working out we were doing during the week while we were here didn't really affect me. I mean, I felt it a little yesterday when we were doing pads, but we went for a run this morning, and I already feel like my lungs have acclimated to it. C. Rod, when he was out here earlier, used a word that sometimes can be polarizing to describe you. Yeah. He called you a journeyman. Do you have any reaction to that? Oh, for sure. I mean, look at my record. You know, I feel like I have. I feel like my record and uh, is is kind of the definition of a journeyman. You know, I've done, and there's, it's not to take negatively. You know, I feel like a journeyman is a guy who's been around the block and has done everything. You know, I did the Ultimate Fighter eight years ago. Uh, it's been, and then I've uh, done the Contender Series. Basically, done anything anything you can do besides uh, Dana White looking for a fight, um, but uh, and they've been in and out of the UFC. This is the third uh, the third time they've hired me, so um, I feel like I I feel like that might even be a record. I don't know how many people in the UFC have been fired twice and rehired for a third time, and so I've been lucky in that sense. But uh, yeah, I am a journeyman. I mean, look at I got 40 fights. I think when you get to a certain point, I mean, uh, you got guys like Jim Miller who are, you know, still doing it really good. And I would consider him a, a type of journeyman. And I think he would consider himself that uh, I feel like it comes with a negative connotation, but it doesn't have to be negative. It can be a positive, you know, that just shows that I have a lot of experience. And that's why I wanted to ask that question because everybody kind of has a different interpretation once you hear that word. With your depth of experience and him being this young rising kid who kind of has a little bit of a, a cockiness to him, a little bit of a swag who, he hasn't been to some of these heights or seen the lights that you have. Do you think that your experience and just your cage time is going to play a factor for you when it comes time Saturday night? Yeah, 100%. And also, you know, not to mention, like, like I know what it feels like to be at the lowest. Like, I've, you know, been I've been cut from the UFC. I was one-on-one coming off the Ultimate Fighter. I got re-signed coming off of uh, the Contender Series, knocking out uh, Jamal Amherst and uh, – uh, I was so happy to get back in the UFC, and then I went 0-3 on a run and got cut again. I was like, man, maybe I should like go back home and become a teacher or something. Like, I had no, I, I was really like, I didn't think I would ever be in the UFC again because of that. And so I know what it's like to feel like I don't have another shot in the UFC. And so for me to have it now again and kind of done do what I've done uh, on this last day, I'm 6-3 and three, uh, since getting rehired again. And so i been in here for, you know, a few years now and been able to hold on to my job uh, and uh, it really gives me a lot of motivation to to keep my job and to and to really try to um, to parlay it into into something great. Thank you. Of course.